Zero Accounting Software 2023, adjusting entry related to depreciation. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Focusrite Scarlet Solo 3rd Gen USB Interface with Software Suite. I've been using a Focusrite for years for my audio needs, before which time I had a USB microphone which plugged directly into the computer. But I think you'll find, as I have found, if you want to increase the quality of your microphone, you will need an interface, and the Focusrite is the go-to interface as far as I'm concerned. I've been using this for years now. It works well, it's easy to use, it seems quite durably built. Because I only do the screen recordings, I only need the one solo interface. However, if you have multiple microphones you need to plug in, or if you have other instruments you need to plug in, you can look at a similar model that has more input ports. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage, going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, Get Great Guitars. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top and then we're going to duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top again, we're going to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle, accounting drop down. We want to open the balance sheet looking at a comparative balance sheet. If you don't have the comparative one, you can open the normal one. We'll tab to the right, accounting drop down. This time the income statement, same thing. We're opening a comparative one, which if you don't have, you can open the standard income statement. Back to the tab to the left, we're doing adjusting entries for depreciable assets, property, plants, and equipment, fixed assets, whatever you want to call them, noting Adjusting entries happen as of the end of the period, either month or year for us. It's the end of the month of February. That's going to be our cutoff date. They typically have a balance sheet account and an income statement account related to them and don't usually have cash related to them. Depreciation is a standard classic adjusting entry. Now, if I go down to depreciation, notice we have a similar concept for it as to why we need to do an adjusting entry as with the prepaid expenses like prepaid insurance, which we did in a prior presentation. However, there's an added twist when we go into the fixed assets because we have this other account we deal with, accumulated depreciation, and we usually record depreciation expense, not like fixed asset expense or equipment expense. So first, why do we do it? Why do we have to record this uh, accrual kind of concept? Why can't I just expense the depreciable assets when I purchase them? And you might first think that it's because maybe you financed the equipment. Maybe you bought a building and you financed it with a loan and therefore you couldn't expense it on a cash-based system. But no, that's not the reason. Uh, whether we financed it or not, we would still want to put it on the books as an asset and depreciate it uh, in the same fashion, no matter how, you know, how we paid for it through financing or not. Uh, and the reason is, of course, if we go to the, if I go to the income statement and I put a $100,000 building that I purchased in January and compared it to February, then it would look like January was a very bad month because we would have an extremely large loss in comparison to February. So the comparison is wrong. We want to have a matching principle so that we can have comparative performance months. Therefore, we put it on the books as an asset. Even if you're in a cash-based system, by the way, even if you're trying to be a cash-based system in the United States for income tax reporting purposes, you will still be forced by the tax code to put it on the books as an asset because it's such an extreme deviation 
from the ideal of basically an accrual-based method, which an accountant would think is more of the ideal way to be reporting, and the cash-based method, which is often easier, which is why oftentimes um, we try to go with a cash-based method if there's not a big you know, difference between the two. But there is a big difference. That's why we have to put it on the books as an asset. So then once it's on the books as an asset, we're going to expense it periodically at the end of the month or the year in a similar fashion we did with the prepayments like prepaid insurance. However, we have an, an added twist here, and that is that we usually make another account for the decrease. So now we have what we call a contra asset account, an account that's an asset, but it actually decreases the assets to contra asset, bringing the asset balance down. Why do we do that? Why don't I just decrease the furniture and fixture directly as we did with the prepaid insurance? Because the idea is that we are consuming a part of the furniture and fixture and we want to allocate it to the income statement in the same period we consumed it in a similar fashion as we did with the prepaid insurance. And one reason is because it's an estimate. It's just an estimate. The furniture and fixture didn't go away. We can't see it like being removed exactly. We're just estimating and allocating the cost of the fixed assets over what we estimate to be its useful life. So one way we can determine and show that it is an estimate is by making another account and say, hey, look, this is what we purchased it for, 98,000. This is what we are depreciating or have depreciated to the year to date as of this point in time. This is the book value, which if we did an ideal process would match the fair market value. However, it's not going to because it's just an estimate. And then the other side will be called depreciation expense on the income statement. Now, there is debate oftentimes as to whether or not we should record fixed assets on a fair market value versus a uh, depreciated asset. And, and it's still, you know, you can go on either side of that kind of argument. Note that when you have something like investments up top, like investments in stocks, there's a more legitimate argument to say I should record the investment in stocks at fair market value instead of at cost or adjusted cost. And the reason there is because if your stock is traded on the public stock exchange, then you know how much the stock is worth at any given time because other stocks, which are exactly the same, are trading at that same point in time. Whereas a building, for example, although it might go up in value instead of down in value, which is what we're doing when we allocate the depreciation. We don't we haven't really locked that in for number one because we haven't sold it. And number number two, uh, we don't really know what happened to any particular building because it's unique in nature. So we can't really we can't really depend on the market. We have to do estimates. And once you once you let in estimates, then of course there's pressure for people to manipulate whatever the estimates are on the property and whatnot. So those are kind of arguments on why you might have a depreciated cost versus a uh, fair market value kind of system. Now, in the United States, we also have to deal with, with this accumulated depreciation for income tax reporting. So that means that we're going to have a separate schedule for depreciation based on tax depreciation. And tax depreciation is quite different than what you would do for normal depreciation oftentimes because they often put in accelerated depreciation and whatnot to try to manipulate uh, or stimulate or whatever they want to call the economy. So that means that the subledger for furniture and fixture is often not worthwhile to kind of track within the accounting system, in this case within zero, because you're going to have to track it again anyways in the tax software in order to get the tax depreciation and the tax software once you have all the data in there you might as well use it to also calculate book depreciation so in the united states we have this question of do i want to keep my books on just tax depreciation which might be easiest for small companies or do i want to have a de depreciation for book that is different from taxes which means that I'm going to have to run two different depreciation schedules using hopefully the same tax software and, and then get the information from the tax software as the subledger in order to do my adjusting entry here. 
So in other words, we're we don't have a subledger in zero oftentimes if that's the method we are using as we do when we're looking at a perpetual inventory system with inventory or accounts receivable when we look at the report by customer. It's similar to the inventory system where we have another subledger if you were tracking inventory outside of zero and doing a, a periodic inventory system. That's kind of what we're doing here with the fixed assets. We have a, a ledger that's gonna be in the tax software that we're going to use to do the calculations. Now, here's just an example of what one might look like. And uh, so that means also on the, on the zero side of things, what you like to do is, is put everything into zero in such a way that the categories will be the same as whatever your sub ledger will be, which means you wanna to talk to your tax professional if you're in the United States and see what, does, what are the accounts for the sub ledgers because they, they break out here to furniture and fixture and machinery and equipment. So that's why when I enter my information in here, we put the fixed assets in, in the grouping of furniture and fixtures and then equipment instead of choosing like furniture and equipment or something like that. You could do that, but that's gonna make things more complicated. You would like to have it tie into the sub ledger. And then you have an option also of in your bookkeeping, breaking out a relative accumulated depreciation account, which ties out to each category of fixed assets, which we did here. We don't see one here because we haven't reported anything to it yet. Or you can have one account for accumulated depreciation, which ties out to all of your fixed assets. I tend to like to match whatever is on the, the sub ledger. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna break out my accumulated depreciation and the same grouping and have a separate accumulation, accumulated depreciation account per grouping, in our case, furniture and fixture and the machinery and equipment. Now, the, th the next thing to note is that this report is quite complex. Uh, there's a lot of detail to it and you've gotta, you've gotta have different reporting for each of these uh, items. So you might say that's quite overwhelming to do. However, it's not really that bad as long as you do it properly as you go. Because all the stuff that that's goes in here from prior periods is, is not gonna change. When you buy a building, the building will just stay there for multiple years Therefore, you don't really have to do anything if you get the building on the books properly to start off with, because then uh, it'll just calculate the depreciation going forward. And all you have to do when you adjust things going from zero to the sub ledger is to get the detail, the things that you added to property planting equipment and the things that you removed from property planting equipment. And there shouldn't be too many of those things because we don't record things to property and plants and equipment all that often, right? We only, we only record some things during the year. Now, when you give this information to the accountant to put into the sub ledger, or when you're putting it into the sub ledger, what you do not want to do is group everything together. Like if I grouped all this stuff together as just one lump sum because I bought it from the same place and I just called it furniture and fixture, that will be a problem, not when I put it on the books, but when I take it off the books. If I sell one thing, like my coffee table or whatever, then I won't be able to easily sell it uh, in accordance with a depreciation schedule because I grouped them all together. Right? So, so you wanna make sure, and you also wanna make sure that you can find the coffee table. So any kind of reference numbers that you can put into your sub ledger, which will allow you to identify the actual piece of furniture and fixture in the future when you sell or dispose of it so that you can properly dispose of it on your sub ledger becomes important. And again, it's one of those things that you wanna build right. You wanna, the, the adage is major twice, cut once, get it right the first time. Don't try to tinker with it and until you get it right. You gotta get it right the first time because that's gonna save you trouble in the future when you start to get this long schedule and you're trying to identify what stuff you still have and what stuff has been removed. All right, uh, that is that is that. Now also note that Zero has this really neat uh, edit layout tab over here, which allows us to group our, our fixed assets. So you can see that's what one of the things we did with our adjusted trial balance is we put our fixed assets and we grouped our fixed assets uh, into these groups, which is really cool, flexible thing that Zero has more, far more flexibility with that tool than other software 
like uh, QuickBooks Online, which has a, a sub-account kind of method, which isn't quite as flexible as that. All right, so now we're just going to do our entries according to our sub-ledger. You might get the sub-ledger like at the end of the year, because if you're doing it from taxes, it's going to record it on a yearly basis. And I could then you know, try to estimate it for a month by just dividing it by 12, for example. Uh, and again, you might you might have a tax-based one as well as a book-based one if you're working with tax software. Okay, so I'm going to take this. So this is the, the furniture and fixture for the year, 141001. I'm going to divide it by 12. That would be 1,166. Uh, 75 would be the depreciation for one month. I'm going to say two months have passed because I'm doing January and February. So I'm going to record depreciation for the two month time period, a total of 2333. Three, three. Now I could record two adjusted entries, one for January, one for February, but I'm just going to try to make my financial statements correct as of the end of February. And so I'm saying this is the depreciation for the end of February. All right, let's finally do the journal entry. So this is going to be uh, a debit to depreciation expense and a credit to accumulated depreciation. Let's go to the first tab, go to our journal entry, accounting drop down reports, and we want to find the uh, journal report again. The journal report, and we will go into add uh, a, an item. This is going to be an adjusting entry. The date is always the end of the period, Feb 28 in our case. Feb 28 is the date. We're not gonna do a reversing entry. Uh, this is a permanent difference, not a temporary difference. No reversing entry involved. And then the account, I'm looking for depreciation. So we have a depreciation account. This is another option that you, kinda, that you have here. You, you could have a separate depreciation account per category such as furniture and fixture and machinery and equipment. I usually uh, don't do that if I, unless I really want that added detail because, uh, so I just put it, I'm just gonna put both the depreciation into one depreciation account. The reason I break it out on the balance sheet but not the income statement, in other words, on the, on the balance sheet half, I'm gonna break out furniture and fixture and equipment but on the income statement, I'm just going to record it to one depreciation account. Why? Because on the income statement, it's a temporary account. It's going to roll into the equity. Whereas on the balance sheet, it's a permanent account. And I kind of like the added detail of being able to show the book value for each category. So that's, but you might do a different method. That's what I do. So the amount's going to be 2333.5. And the other side's going to be accumulated depreciation. Uh, accumulated depreciation for the equipment. So we've added that already. Uh, that looks good. And that's it. So let's go ahead and save that one. And then we'll do the next bit. Posting it. Balance sheet. Update the balance sheet. And I got a hiccup. Don't give me the hiccups. I'm working here. That's gonna mess me up, man. I'm, I'm not stopping. Here we go. We've got uh, the adjusting entry that happened for the fur for the furniture and equipment. Where did it go? I put it into the equipment. I messed it up. Let me go back into this one. I picked the wrong account. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Here we go. We're gonna go in and fix it. I'll fix it. Don't worry. I can fix it. We're gonna hit the drop down and edit this thing. And we want the, the other accumulated depreciation account for the furniture and fixtures. All right, that should do it. Post it. I'm gonna open the balance sheet back up. Accounting drop down, balance sheet comparative report. And now let's check it out and it should be correct this time. Scrolling down, down, down. So there it is. So now we have the 98,000 minus the 9833. So we increased the contra asset account, which decreased the book value to the 8816650. Uh, so there we have that. And so now this ties out to what we paid for it 
and then this is this and then over here we have the current year to date is going to be 14001 oh that's too many zeros divided by uh 12 times 2 plus the prior year depreciation of the 75 is the 983350 983350 book value 881650 okay so then and then on the income statement we just recorded everything just to depreciation expense. Boom. Depreciation expense, lowering net income, even though cash isn't impacted. So that's usually oftentimes a big uh, entry. Notice what's happening with our adjusting entries. We had, uh, it, we're, we're, hit, we're going into a big loss here in, in February. We're still positive on the year. But that's often what happens with the adjusting entries, especially related to depreciation, because it's recording an expense. All right, so then we're going to say, let's do the next one. Let's pull this thingy up. And this is, where's my calculator? Calculator uh, 833 is the depreciation on the year. So I'm going to say 833 divided by 12 times 2. We want 138. Did I do that right? 833 divided by 12 times 2. Of course I did it right. What are you doubting your doubting my capabilities? I know how to use the calculator. Uh, this is going to go. Let's close this out and do uh, a new journal. New journal. I'm just going to call it ADJ entry date 228. The date is 228. That's the cutoff date. Things have been cut off after that time. You don't want to, don't put your foot over the line or you get your foot cut right off because that's the cutoff point. So this is going to be depreciations, the debit, and 138. He's got his foot in the in the door. Better get that foot out of the door. It's the cutoff. This is the cutoff date. This is going to be ACC depreciation. ACC depreciation for the equipment now. There it is. There's the debit. There's the credit. Uh, I think everything is correct this time. Did I do it right? I picked the right one. Let's post it. And then we'll check it out. Balance sheet. Update. The date is up. The update is a down date. The update is down because then it fit. So here it is. Uh, it put notice it put the accumulated depreciation on top. But notice how cool the layout is over here. I can say I could just fix that. I can go into my edit layout. Say that's not how it should be. You're trying to do alphabetical order, but I'm going to fix it. And I'm going to put uh, where 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 is it? My equipment accumulated. I'm going to put the the equipment on top like it should be can't really do that very easily on other software like uh, quickbooks online for example so super cool super cool you have other techniques you can do in a quickbooks online but the flexibility the flexibility man i'm saving that because that was a important change important update that we want to keep in place going forward so there we have it we've got the five thousand uh, minus the accumulated depreciation brings us to the book value for 86117. If I go over here and just double check that, we've got the, the 833 divided by 12 times 2. That's for the two months of this year plus the prior year depreciation of 0. Uh, so 138, that's what it should be. 138, and so the book value for 8. So notice how nice this is it can have how much detail it gives us we're like yeah we purchased the furniture and equipment for ninety eight thousand, but then we've depreciated thus far allocating the cost of 9833 over the useful life not just this couple months to 88 uh, 166 50 and we have the equipment here five thousand minus the 138.83 the book value is this and if I add the two book values together, we've got that plus 88166.5. See how much detail we give there? Now, if you don't want to give that much detail, again, the, the flexibility here of the report, if I go into here, allows us to say, I don't want to do that, man. I just want to show 
like the the book value so i can just collapse these and just say just do that just show me the book value that's all i want to see and because of the flexibility and the way we have structured this and zero's uh capacity we have then now we've just got we've just got the collapsing the book value of these two and if i don't even want to see that i'm just like i just want to see the fixed asset i don't want to see any of that other stuff we can go in here and just collapse and just say just show me the fixed assets like that now i'm not going to save these changes because i like the detail but just note that it, that those are ways that you can summarize your report down here and now you've just got that line item for the fixed assets so a lot of flexibility kind of like a like a gymnast in flex in because because gymnasts are flexible and if i go down so there's the depreciation and here's our net income thus far all right let's open up the trial balance and see where we stand at this point the trusty trial balance we'll go to the reports type in not trusty just trial balance even though the trial balance is trusty trustworthy trial balance and we're gonna say we're gonna say custom date and we're 2020 i'll just say the end of the year so we'll pick up our reversing entries too this is where we stand uh if you were correct last time if your trial balance was in balance but now you're off the things we changed of course were the accumulated depreciation for furniture and fixture accumulated depreciation for the equipment and the one depreciation account that we recorded down below which we accounted for both of those depreciate depreciable asset types in